Goes Nellums, huh? <laughs> 59-44. left here. Michigan State going on a 16-0 run to start the second half. And it's been their ball game throughout the last 12 minutes, that's for sure. There's the numbers that support it. Iowa just can't find the basket. Not only the poor shooting from the outside, but they're having difficulty getting the ball in the interior. Smith, that might quiet the crowd. He got a layup without the air ball. His fifth point, first bucket of the second half. Respert and Wyshynski have been the two most dangerous Spartans tonight from the outside, and they're both in the lineup. This is Respert. Well, they're running that offense to perfection now. They're getting the good screens and the open pop-outs. Respert didn't have a defender anywhere near him. 17 for Sean Respert. Now they're going to keep up with the air ball chant, I guess. Seven minutes left, 15-point ball game. A.C. Earl, Wade Looking Bill, and Val Barnes trying to get back in. They await at the scorer's table for Iowa. Tell you what, you can run out of real estate in a hurry when you go up against Poplowski down low, can't you? Hurry's three, no good. Webb got a rebound in there. Say, he and Miller are kind of anchor, and I mean literally anchor the inside of that Michigan State defense. Got one guy at 270, the other one at 255, and I'm being very conservative when I say 255. Here's Millard working on Miller. That's some poundage, and he got it. Chance for a three-point play. He looked like Keith Millard on that move. <laughs> Watch again, the good dish down inside. Kevin Smith got it to Millard. Good pump fake. Miller didn't take it, but he took the second one, and Millard was right there to get the draw. That was strong. Yeah, that was good. As we said, Russ had some academic problems. He was a red shirt last year and became eligible only a week ago. They expect him to help the cause. He's got four points tonight, chance for a three-point play, and a chance to cut it to a dozen. It rolls out on him, though. I was going to have to pick up the pressure and create some turnovers here, Larry, or it's going to be too late. Poplowski, nice entry pass by Wyshynski outside. And a foul. Yeah, the block pass was good, and it was a terrific catch on the inside by Poplowski. Once he got it, nobody's going to stop him once he goes up. It's either going to be a foul or a basket. When you're 270 pounds, it's pretty tough to get the ball away from a guy like that. Millard goes out, A.C. Earl comes back in. Mike Poplowski at the free throw line. They call him Pep. Big fella out of Detroit, 275, a senior. And in the 1,000-point club, right on 1,000 until that free throw. As a matter of fact, now 1,001. Spare time when it isn't basketball, gets on his Harley, spends a little time out biking. He looks like a looks like a Harley guy, doesn't he? Well, how would you like to see him coming down the road over those halls? Forget it. He's got that 9 o'clock shadow thing happening on a 611 frame. I'm out of his way. Again, it's 15. Smith. Well, Snow just ran off and left him alone. Did you see him doubling down on A.C. Earl that time? They know Smith can't shoot from the outside. Now Poplowski's fired up after he got the rebound. It was fouled by Murray. And he gave it quite an eruption coming down court to show the motion on the big fella's part. He's going right back to the free throw line. You know, Brad, obviously this is an emotional game for Iowa tonight uh, with the departure of Chris Street. But you know, also for Michigan State, this, they're kind of on a mission of their own right now. They've lost two home games here, and they desperately need to get back on the winning track again. And Judd Heathcote told me before the game tonight, he said, we've got just about as much a mission as they have. Definitely not in the same category, though. You know, a, a writer that covers University of Iowa said it so well about Chris Street. He said he played on the court. He was emotion in motion. I thought that was one of the nicest things I read this week. Biggest lead of the night coming up if he hits this free throw. Uh -huh. got <laughs> foul on Wyshynski, trying to stay with Kenyon Murray. Michigan State foul number 
As Larry said, an important game with the Big Ten looking like this. Indiana, though they were scared by the Gophers last night, survived, and they're perfect. Michigan at 5-1. And, and then Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Purdue to follow. And these two teams in the bottom half trying to work their way up. Iowa, if this holds, will fall to 1-3, and three, and Michigan State will even their record. That's something they desperately need to do, having lost two Big Ten games here already. Michigan State fell out of the top 25 just last week. Iowa's still in there. But this one's going to be a tough setback for them. The Hawkeyes have one more run left. They've got to do it now. Michigan State's not about to give this basketball up. They're going to take care of it and get it to the big guy. Foul on Earl, his third. I wanted to see that hook shot again, but AC got a piece of it. We're in East Lansing. This hook shot comes up from somewhere over on the west side of town. I tell you what, we're running in slow motion, but if it was an actual speed, it'd be about the same speed. <laughs> <laughs> Mike won't have a chance to see this game on replay till tomorrow. We'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he may be after us with that Harley. Well, I like him. He has been yeah, he's good. some kind of player. Now his senior season, pro scouts like the looks of a wide load like him. And you know, really, he was a red shirt his freshman year because he had knee surgery his senior year in high school and uh, had to sit out that one year. So he's really come back very strong. The knees are strong, ready to step up to that next level. All Big Ten last year, maybe on the way to the same again this season. A dozen points with his eight rebounds on the night. And it's back to 17. It's been a Michigan State team that's been very focused tonight. Well, hard way outside, can't get it. Snow comes out of there, three on one. That was a good thought. It was kind of a snow flurry on that pass, and that one goes away. Midnight Madness coming up tomorrow night as we start off with Southwest Louisiana and UMass playing their final game at Curry Hicks Cage before they move into their new facility. A little Midnight Madness. That would be great. UMass in a five-game winning streak right now. Earl got the roll. AC with 15. Iowa needs some good turnovers right now. They need to force the action. And we're under five minutes. Brad Nestler and Larry Conley with you. Breslin Center, East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State went out to a big lead in the first half. Iowa came storming back and led at halftime by one. But then a gigantic run to open the second half as Poplowski picks up his third, a 16-0 start for the Spartans this half, and they have never looked back. That little sheepish grin, it means he was caught. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miller will come back in for Mike. You move out a guy that's 275, you bring in a guy about 260. I mean, they take up some lane. And one thing about Poplowski, even though he goes to that bench, he goes with enthusiasm. <laughs> Get everybody behind the bench over there applauding. Does everything full blast. AC four out of six from the free throw line tonight. He's had a pretty quiet 16 points, that's for sure. Miller, another rebound. He's got to be in double figures now in the rebounding area. got to anticipate Michigan State now holding the basketball. They're going to spread the floor and make Iowa come out and play that man-to-man -man defense. Yep, Judd just put his hand up. So did Tom Izzo, one of his assistants, as if to say, let's pull it out a little bit. Well, they listened for about 10 seconds of that. Wyshynski missed the shot outside. And a foul on Miller as Millard worked for the rebound. That's four on Miller now. So he and Poplowski both with four personals. Not sure, Judd. He's going to just really... Happy about that particular shot. I think he'd like to have about 30 more seconds off that clock before he launched one. That truly is one of the funniest, funniest men I have known in a long time. One of the funniest basketball coaches. If you sit down and have a conversation with him, he'll give you some great one-liners. In fact, he used to have a joke line. People could call in. He had jokes. <laughs> had to pay for them. It only took him about five minutes to have tears in my eyes yesterday talking to him. Well, all right. Russ 
a 6'8 redshirt freshman, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, his hometown. The second one rattled out. Poplowski's been big in the second half on the glass. Let's see if Rashford can handle the basketball out top. He's not going to let Snow handle it. They'll take the open shot if they've got it. I know they want to run some clock right now. Get a couple of ticks off. Down to 20 seconds. And it clicks down to 345 on the game clock. Nice double team. Winters trying to come up with the ball. And the foul will be on Winters. He lost his balance a little bit. He almost had the steal and then lost his footing. Watch it again right now. Watch Winters go back in and double team right here. You got Ursel, Earl on the back side. You got Winters on the front side. Poplowski really struggling to get a handle on it. James will sit down. He was Chris Street's roommate. Perfect six for six from the free throw line for Mike tonight. Boy, he gets everybody's attention. I don't know if it's his size or what, but the 15,000 plus in here just go down to a total hush. You know, Brad, when he was first here, he played with a great guard here at Michigan State by the name of Steve Smith, who's now playing with the Miami Heat, and uh, was kind of overshadowed. It was a little while to develop because you build an offense around a great offensive star like Smith. Most of those points came from the outside, so it took him a little while to kind of get his game going offensively inside, particularly after the knee injury. And a foul down low on Wyshynski. Steve Smith playing great for Miami here in the last week or so, as a matter of fact, after being out injured for about 34 games. Saturday, actually, we've got a triple header when you consider Midnight Madness, Midnight tomorrow night, then we'll work it in. we got DePaul and the Bearcats of Cincinnati. That's where Larry will be. And Southern Illinois and Southwest Missouri State will have at it at 2 o'clock. Double header day, Saturday, here at ESPN. So you can go to bed late tonight, you know, and get up, have a little, I guess, brunch or something, then Conley will be ready for some more hoops on Saturday. I'm really anxious to see the Cincinnati club. They've been playing very well. They're only lost to Indiana so far, and they beat uh, Xavier, their cross-town rival, the other night. Had a full house, over 13,000 people. Bob Huggins looks like he may be uh, making noise about going back to that Final Four again. That's who Michigan State lost to in the second round last year in the Midwest Regional, Cincinnati. 3.31 to go. It's a 13-point Michigan State lead.